So hi everyone. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Vigro Africa's podcast, Investments for Impact, Season 2. And today I'm joined here by two amazing people. We have the co-founder and CEO of Vigro Africa, Wilfred Jaggi. And we also have the CTO of Vigro Africa, Wamboy uh, Gashenko. So welcome, Karibu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Wonderful. So my first question will be uh, to you, Wilfred. A few years back, Vilgro Africa didn't necessarily have a gender balance. It was mostly male dominated. But since you took over as CEO, the, one of your core focus has been to ensure we have that gender balance. Why was that important? Yeah, you're very spot on. Uh, in my expect, uh, acceptance letter to become CEO, uh, gender balance was among my four priority areas. And if you've grown in a family, for example, where you're just boys or you're just girls, you always feel that there's something missing when you go and hang out with your cousins from families that have both both genders. So I think that women bring a new dynamic in, at a workplace, which we were missing. So I was very keen to make sure that we have that bit of uh, balance. Uh, most importantly also, there was a report done by Gali on uh, gender lens investing, and it showed the gap, accelerators and incubators were widening the gap uh, because the more we incubated and accelerated, the more male-led companies were raising more than women. Uh, so, and one of the things that report said was that, first of all, the decision-making at uh, a VC fund or an incubator, if the decision-making organ or the leadership doesn't have gender balance, then you can expect the results, right? To reflect that. So they were talking about how do you have gender parity from investment committee level to leadership level. And then from there, then you start seeing different results. And we are already seeing that, right? Uh, since you, you both came on board that you'll always make sure you're voicing whenever uh, we don't have a gender balance in the portfolio, in the team. And I think we are just better that way. Yeah. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And and one boy, having joined as CTO, just adding on to what Wilfred has said, what are some of the items that you look you you led in impacting to make sure that we had a more gender focused profile? Uh, so it, th thank you, Francisca. I, I think in my role, which is very technology heavy, um, I, I I think about the fact that. I've grown up working in teams and in organizations that are uh, very gender imbalanced. Um, you know, more engineers are, are men than women. And uh, what that does is that it brings one perspective to the technology development and forgets the other perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, li I like to say that, especially for products that will be used by both men and women, if you don't have the perspective um, that, um, that, that women bring um, to that development, you really lose out on something. And so a big part of what I have worked on in the past year um, is to bring that perspective and to make sure that we are hearing the voices of women more and more um, so that there's a very balanced perspective as we're doing technology development, business development. Um, I think I completely agree with you, Wilfred. If you don't have that balance, you're really missing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want to take you back a bit. You talked about even in the, in the engineering space, it's not common to see women uh, leading in it and much less to the level of a CTO. We, there are very few female CTOs. And I think that is uh, quite amazing that you have managed to reach to that level. What are some of the challenges you faced in becoming um, a CTO and growing in the engineering space as a woman? Uh, we, we may have to go too far back to, <laughs> to come up with that answer. But, you know, when, when I think back to being in engineering school and having a very small percentage of uh, women in my engineering classes, it's not a surprise then that as you go higher in the ranks and, and, and as time goes by, that that is also reflected in the positions that women hold in um, technology and in engineering you know, what I find actually uh, fairly sad is, you know, when I look at our universities right now, uh, in the life sciences, you'll see a lot of women and uh, that's beginning to build up. But in engineering, we still have um, that shortage, um, women being under 10 percent in engineering classes in our local universities. And then that means that as we move forward and as people go into leadership positions, 
we're going to have the same thing perpetuating, right? So we really have to start at that, at that very basic level where we are encouraging our girls and young women to go into engineering and then nurturing them and uh, mentoring them mm -hmm. to go into leadership positions in engineering and technology. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, absolutely. And Wilfred, do you feel that having more women in leadership has made Bill Grow uh, grow as an organization? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, first of all, I was raised by a single woman, so I know what women can offer. Uh, uh, women bring a new element, they bring a new, uh, a new uh, perspective to the way they think at things, uh, they look at things. Women tend to be more holistic in how they look at things. So I feel that even our decision making has improved as an organization. We are always thinking from different angles than when we were just uh, male dominated. I think men think in a certain way, uh, which tends to be almost sequential and mostly logical. I feel that women are more creative, more dynamic, uh, they are more nurturing also. So if there are things that you're not addressing, they'll be the first ones to spot those things. So I feel that we are way much better than we were before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And one boy, would you, is there anything you could add to that in the few months that you've been here? You, you know, I, I think Wilfred, as you, as you talk about the differences uh, between men and women, uh, it's a very interesting book that I read. I, I can't remember the name of the book, but it was talking about um, men being like waffles. You know, they sort of compartmentalize things mm -hmm. and think about things in squares. And I yeah. think that's a logical thing. Exactly. And women being more like spaghetti, yeah. where they make uh, those yeah. connections just like a big uh, bowl of spaghetti. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you have both, uh, then you have a very... Um, a very good mix and a very good balance. Yeah. You have waffle and spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what I think of that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but it's definitely breakfast and lunch, right? Yes, that, exactly right. <laughs> and if you may allow, I want to throw Githeri in there because <laughs> if you are, those who know Githeri is a mixture of beans and, uh, and maize. maize. Uh, for you to have the most amazing Githeri, you have to have an equal number of beans and, <laughs> and maize. maize. Otherwise, if it's all maize, or all beans, then it doesn't taste as, as the same, it's right? It's not Gideri. Yeah, it's not Gideri anymore. So we like to see that uh, balance, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I should probably... I, giving me ideas for dinner tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. And um, there's been some argument, and you know, it's often said that women are a minority group. Um, I would like to hear from both of you. Do you agree with that? Hmm. Oh. Women first. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, being a minority group, you know, the reality of it is that in certain spheres, we are a minority group. You know, I just talked about in the engineering and technology space and uh, the fact that if you go to any meetings or, uh, you know, any companies that are doing technology development, we are certainly a minority. Um, so I guess it depends on what perspective you're looking at. If you, if you go to boardrooms, Across the world, it doesn't matter where you are, women are a minority on, on the boards. Um, so from those perspectives, I, I would agree, yes. Um, but from the perspective of, um, you know, sheer numbers, we are, we are not. Uh, so we need to start um, in increasing those numbers so that we are in more boardrooms, we're more engineering and technology organizations and um, change that paradigm. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Wolf? Yeah. Uh I agree with the last point that if you look at sheer numbers, mm. we are almost, we match like 50-50. Yeah, uh, There is an equal number of women as there is men. Uh, but then depending on which field, uh, sometimes you find that there is underrepresentation, which shouldn't have to be so, right? Uh, I think it's Obama uh, who said that if you're not having both teams, it's like playing a team where half, half of your teammates are on the bench, right? You can't win, right? So you need yeah. to have all your team members at the game participating equally. All right, wonderful. And given that Vilgro has now reached a space where we have achieved gender balance both um, in senior leadership, in the board, and also amongst the team, how are we cascading that same um, mantra to the portfolio companies that the organization supports? Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could start with you, Wilfred? Yeah. So... Very soon you'll begin hearing us doing things like Women in Health Accelerator Program. 
uh, modeled after the women in tech done mm -hmm. by uh, Stanchard Group. Mm -hmm. We are thinking of in the coming year something in those lines because you need to also, as we said about men thinking in boxes and women being more like spaghetti, it means that even the way you support female-led enterprises, the way you coach them how to pitch, how to behave in a boardroom, how to uh, 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 think bold and big and present their ideas in a way that investors want to open their, their wallet and, and write them a check. So there are all these soft skills that go hand in hand with that. So you need to tailor make the portfolio management, the incubation support to women differently. And that's one of the things we, we are looking to experimenting. And I think I will have both of you, uh, I'll have your support as we do this and see once we bring them in, because selection is just one part, mm -hmm. but then how are we supporting them in a way that they are able to go and win in a male-dominated world? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, Absolutely. You, you know, I really feel like, um, you know, it, we, we are coaching and mentoring these women. Uh, you know, we'll source them and we'll bring them in and we'll start coaching and mentoring them. My concern is that they're then going to present to a very male-dominated um, investment mm -hmm. um, world. Mm -hmm. And I, I really hope that that world as well uh, can start having more women because instead of coaching our women to, um, to appeal to the male investors, mm. um, having some women on that side as well will really help us to have that connection, uh, that next step, um, be able to get the women uh, to that follow on funding. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things we can do in that accelerator program, even the selection panel, we can bring more women in that panel. And even when we prepare them and present them, we'll also be looking at investors who have a gender lens investing uh, mindset. So those will be the first uh, priority to, uh, for them when they come to fundraising. So I think it can be done. There's enough people thinking about this. Uh, there's a group now called 2X Collaborative, which is bringing all investors, all DFIs that are thinking uh, women lens, uh, gender lens investing. And they're trying to raise $3 billion to that effort. Wow. So there's good things happening. And I think uh, this is the right time. This is the right time, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. And there's a good point you raised there, uh, Wamboy, about even having that investor panel be gender balanced to create that kind of bias that can be there if it's only a male panel. Who they're presenting to and i'm wondering what are some of the other biases you've identified in your career which we perhaps is already beginning to change but which we also need to focus on changing to create opportunities for both female-led and male-led enterprises i i think it's really uh very tied to what i was just saying which is that um we don't want women to start being um sort of like you don't men, want women to become men. To become men. You yeah. don't want women to become men because yeah. we bring our own perspective, Unique. our own way of doing things. Mm -hmm. um, that, that sort of brings a richness to the way that, that everybody works. Mm. Um, so that's been a big part of what I have experienced in my career is that I've gotten a lot of feedback about, um, you know, could I be more aggressive? And I'm, I'm, I'm not an aggressive person. I mean, it may be a surprise to some people, but I'm not mm. an overly aggressive person. And, and I think that in, in uh, large corporations, there's that idea that, um, you know, you, the, the more aggressive you can be, the more you can show that, you know, you can leave some dead bodies behind. That, mm. that is something that people um, appreciate. And you get promoted based on uh, how, you know, how, 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 you know, aggressive is a word that that makes me very nervous because um, it has some uh, level of violence about it. Mm. Um, and it is that idea that you will get things done regardless, mm. you know, who it hurts, um, what, um, what the cost is to yourself as an individual and to the organization. Mm. Uh, and so I think that beginning to think about things in a more holistic way and how how do we bring those uh, I think Wilfred said nurturing, um, not not to be ashamed that we are mm. women and that we are that nurturing person, mm -hmm. and that is a strength that we can bring that 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 can also support leadership mm -hmm. um, and organizations. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a, it's a really good point you bring there, and it, it's actually been a, a, a discussion a lot where people talk about 
women being maybe soft spoken or a bit gentle in their approach and then you expect men to be a little bit more aggressive in their approach and sometimes uh, there's also the issue of creating a bias that you can find men who are a bit soft spoken you can find women who are a little bit aggressive so do you f- do you think in addition to that the same way you're saying you're told you you need to be more aggressive and then there's some women who'll be told you're too aggressive women are not supposed to be aggressive so then the question becomes you know you can't win because yeah. if you're in one side it's wrong in another it's 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 wrong still so my question here is and also going to the point of they say the nice girls don't get the corner office right mm. so how how do you feel that kind of narrative and per, let me say perspective of basically what female is and what male is has impacted the ability for women to progress mm so those cultural and societal norms are actually very dangerous both for men and for women i think mm-hmm. because people are who they are and they can be on a spectrum Mm-hmm. um whether they are male or they are female they, there's a spectrum that is not uh appreciated or approved of in our societies and until we accept that people can just be who they are whether they are you know on the aggressive without really hurting anyone or the more gentle side and they are productive in what they are doing without having to fit into those boxes into those gender role boxes i, I think that's where we need to end up Mhm. What do you yeah. think of that? Yeah, I I completely agree. First of all, as men, we don't want women to act behave like men, right? That's not not what we are saying. I I think men will be up in arms if all of a sudden women became almost like men in terms of behavior and character and everything. Uh but what we can do here is first of all accept that there is a bias and start talking about it and then go in the investment making decision cognizant of the fact that there is a bias right so you it's a bit of uh behavior change a bit of uh learning that you need to teach these investment making des- uh, bodies that look there is a bias the data shows there is a bias but yet on the other side we see that investment in women is one of the best investments actually women investment is an asset class on its own you look at how they repay their loans default rates and you go to any bank they'll tell you that women are the better uh, p- people to invest in when it comes to loans and, and repayment rates it's a no it's a all asset class on its own the other thing is that women also don't earn or make money just for their sake whatever they make earn they reinvest in their families in the society mm. much more compared to men so if you want to change all these other societal issues you have to include women right yeah. in fact they say that women are the society because they are the ones who give birth and raise the other gender right so they raise men so can you imagine now if you now bring women at the center uh, and you start getting more representation i think we everyone wins at the end of the day yeah yeah Absolutely. i'd like to comment on uh, our internal biases mm. because I, i think we all have them yeah. mm. uh, whatever they are we we all either because of how we grew up or things we've seen in the media or whatever we all have our own internal biases and until each of us individually accepts to look deep within and think about who or what class of people am i biased against mm-hmm. is it gender based is it race based mm-hmm. is it identify those and acknowledge them and then start working on them individually before yeah. we even start working on them as a society or an organization mm-hmm. that is where we need to start yeah. um and it's hard it's hard to look within and say oh yes i've always been biased against this class of people not sure why look back maybe on my upbringing or the things i've been watching on media and uh a, 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 and identify those mm. Mm. and i think the next podcast we should do should be around breaking the bias because there's so much of biases yeah absolutely when you think about skin color gender age culture so many biases and they play out a mm. lot when you're the one deciding who gets investment or not. Yeah. Absolutely. That is true. That is true. And I I like what you're both saying about even just taking a step back when you're looking at uh, maybe it's a company that you're looking to invest in and you have to choose between two. This first asking you being aware of your bias that's a very good point. So you can ask yourself the question 
Am I choosing this company based on merit or am I choosing them based on my own internal biases? Mm -hmm. Or when it comes to promotion, am I choosing this person based on merit or based on my own internal biases? Yes, I, I, I like what you're both saying there. And, and even just maybe taking it a step further, do you think the government should even make it a legal requirement that, uh, like what they've done in Kenya when it comes to um, offices, you know, uh, people who are leaving, leading in public sectors and having that uh, gender buy-in. So they'd also be in organizations as well that um, you should have a certain percentage of your leadership team or your entire organization should be a certain percent uh, female or male. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting one. Like <laughs> uh, the danger with that, we don't want organizations just to check a box, right? Okay. And we've seen startups that because you made you you force them to have a gender balance, mm. they will have a female founder and then give them her one percent, right? Yeah. They will say, okay, to 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 qualify this, we're gonna give we're gonna look for one female one pretty lady, give her 1% of the company and we're done. And so, put her in front of the camera. Exactly. Right? Mm. We don't want that. We want women to win fair and square. I think they can. Uh, I personally believe they can. So how do we create a, a level playing field, so to speak, where women can thrive as equal as men? I think that leveling of the ground is what we need more than uh, a quota system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how do you think we can begin leveling the ground? So I think some of the things we've already said here, one, leveling the ground is acknowledging the biases mm -hmm. and saying these are the biases in our industry. We can map them, we know them. Two, uh, once we know there is a bias, we also start getting, first of all, let's get a semblance of fairness and balance in the decision-making organ, be it investment committee, uh, fund managers. So you have more women uh, represented in that, right? Uh, let's also have more women of more female mentors mm. who are willing to share their journey of how they build, how they overcome. So that's, that's part of the leveling. We have enough resources to do that, right? And then more and more women will now feel that, wow, this is a game that I can participate in. Yeah, mm. Mm. Absolutely. yeah and, and I think that mentorship, um, the, what you just mentioned about mentorship is, um, I think, often undervalued because I, I think that having role models, women role models who have done something that a young person is aspiring to mm. makes a big difference. If they can see themselves in someone who um, is successful, has done it, is mm. able, um, they, can then, they can then look at, at, at that person and say, hey, that person looks like me, mm. right? Why can't I do this thing that I've thought about only maybe in, in uh, the recesses of my heart uh, why can't I make this come to pass? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that mentorship, uh, having women, successful um, women mentoring the next generation is absolutely key. Yeah. Mm. That's a very good point. And, and why do you think that that isn't already happening as it is right now, being a, a female leader yourself who has achieved a lot so far? It, it's absolutely happening. It's happening. Uh, it, it, it's okay. happening for the small number of women who are in those positions. Okay. Um, I certainly am open to mentoring women and I do that on an ongoing basis. Um, I, I can't tell you how many young women I have mentored, um, especially in the fields of, of technology and engineering. Mm -hmm. um, uh, nothing gives me more pleasure uh, than doing that. In fact, I, I currently have several young women as young as high school, and uh, beyond college uh, that are mentoring um, in the roles of engineering and, and technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it comes back again to sheer numbers. Mm. There's few of us, and so uh, we just have to grow that base um, so that we can mentor more people. So I think it's one person at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. And what, what advice, it's really good that you're doing that. And what advice would you give for maybe the female leaders who aren't? And what advice would you give for the young girls who are looking for this mentorship? Um, anybody who is not uh, mentoring uh, people uh, so that they can aspire to, to where they are, I know it's, it's a big time commitment, uh, but I tell you, it's so rewarding when you see these young people that you're mentoring actually achieve big things. That's extremely rewarding. In fact, I think you gain more than they do, um, uh, uh, honestly. Um, uh, and for, for young girls who 
may be thinking about going into certain positions. It, it doesn't matter whether it's technology, entrepreneurship, um, anything, whatever it is that you're aspiring to do, look around because you, 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 sh you will be able to find somebody mm -hmm. and be bold enough to say, hey, I would love to be mentored by you. Mm -hmm. um, and it will make a very big difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Wilfred, what do you think about men in leadership positions? You know, as Wamboy said, the number of women in female positions is few and we can't mentor everyone, but there are men in leadership position and there are times when they shy away a bit from mentoring women. Is that, what advice would you give to, to you know, men in leadership position with regards to mentoring women? If you're a man and you listen to me and you're shy of mentoring women, I think something is wrong with you, right? <laughs> you should be. I jump at an opportunity to be uh, hung around women, mentor women, because I've grown up in a family where I have sisters I've grown up with, I have cousins who are uh, ladies, and I just enjoy the vibe, the whole uh, vibe that they bring. So I think uh, you need to see me if you have a, a struggle <laughs> as a man mentoring women. And then the other thing we need to do is at our portfolio, I think in the next sessions, we need to host some of the women founders that have been trailblazers. Absolutely. I'm talking about Sona Shah of uh, Neopenda, building a medical device. Gordon C, Mark, raised a ton of money. We have Caitlin of Flair, again, doing amazing well. Absolutely. Uh, we have Olivia mm. of, uh, uh, of um, Mama, Mama Op. We, we don't have shortage of, shortage of this. So one way of mentoring them is mentorship is bring these women in these podcasts, and then as more women are listening to them, the, the 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 light bulb moment that oh, I can also do it, and then leave an open channel communication where whoever wants to be mentored they can reach out. Also, I'm appealing to all women there who want to mentor other women, uh, other women entrepreneurs. You don't have to have to be in healthcare if you've built a successful uh, female-led enterprise in Kenya or globally. We are looking for people like you. So please join on board uh, to come and help us create this uh, program of women in health acceleration. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me and for joining me here at Pete's Cafe. Yeah. Um, as you can see, they have amazing coffee. Oh, yeah. yeah really the dawa is amazing too. For sure, for sure.